Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and a quick review of the Arrow Lake version of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13, which is a little bit different in a lot of ways and exactly the same in some other ways with regards to the Lunar Lake version that we looked at. So the key difference between Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake, you're gonna get more cores on the Arrow Lake, less cores on the Lunar Lake, better battery life on the Lunar Lake, less battery life on the Arrow Lake. Makes sense, right? So single multi-core performance, on the Arrow Lake is very good. Uh, but honestly, using it in real world usage, I didn't notice a huge difference between that and Lunar Lake. Even though the Lunar Lake has less cores, uh, less threads, no hyper threading that this does have. So uh, it's kind of a, a wash in that area. I didn't see a huge difference in real world performance. Now, the graphics on the Lunar Lake are actually better than the graphics on the Arrow Lake. So you're getting integrated graphics here. Not terrible, but not great either. So when we compare it to the uh, Intel Arc 140V graphics that you get on Lunar Lake, it's a lot better than this one. So uh, if you're gonna do anything kind of graphics intensive on the road and so forth, I would opt for Lunar Lake. Now, when it comes to performance, CPU performance, it is better on this. But again, like I said, I'm not noticing a, a huge difference in real world performance. So when doing Microsoft Office email web browsing, I didn't notice a huge difference on this. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you need certain RAM requirements. Now, I know a lot of LLMs dealing with AI, the more RAM, the better. So one of the reasons I was interested in the Arrow Lake version is that that can get up to 64 gigabytes of memory, which is what I have here, uh, non-upgradable memory. But you're limited to 32 on Lunar Lake. So if you have a specific need for more RAM, so this is the clear choice here because you can get this with the 64 gigabytes of memory. Now, I got the optional OLED display with the touch screen here and it's 120 Hertz. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it weighs a little bit more, maybe a little bit more than a kilogram. Whereas on the Lunar Lake non-touch OLED that uh, Lenovo sent over for me to review, that one came in under a kilogram. But when you're traveling, throwing this in your bag, I didn't notice a huge difference. It's not that much uh, heavier than the Lunar Lake version, even though that is sub one kilogram. That is truly remarkable. The build quality is the typical ThinkPad build. It's built like a tank in a lot of ways, made to take a licking and keep on ticking. So that has not been an issue. Love the keyboard here in terms of the key travel, overall feedback, typing on this has been a pleasure. Key, the keys, everything works out well. It's backlit and of course that's great. Now I opted for the Sensil haptic touchpad here. So this is the haptic touchpad. Of course, you can go with a traditional touchpad with the physical mouse buttons, but I found that the touchpad here was really good. You can fine tune the sensitivity and the settings. You can play with the haptic engine feedback to see what you like as far as the sensitivity and so forth. And I found that scrolling, doing all your gestures, everything worked out really well on this one, of course. So uh, I would opt for it even on the Lunar Lake if you can. Uh, if you have the choice there, obviously go with the Sensil as far as I'm concerned. I know traditionalists want those physical mouse buttons, especially when you're using the track point, which of course is present here. Then go with the traditional and it's fine. You won't have any issues scrolling, gestures, and of course responsiveness. It's all fine. I just like the uh, added layer of uh, feedback you get on this haptic engine here, on this uh, force pad here. Now, that being said, it is really, really good. Now. I opted for the 5G on this one. So this modem actually came in really handy. I just came back from Palo Alto on a trip that I will be telling you about very soon. So stay tuned, I can't talk about it just yet, but I got an inside look at something really special. So I was in Palo Alto uh, going through some things there and I brought this laptop with me because it has the built-in 5G that I opted for and I was able to be connected everywhere I went, secure connection, pretty much everywhere uh, that I needed to be, got the work done I needed to get work done, and of course, the fa fact that it is thin and light, throw it in your bag, and it worked out really well in that regard. So it didn't weigh me down, I had always on connectivity, I had the touch screen here, I had the gorgeous OLED display. Now, the OLED display here is 500 nits of br brightness, of course, and when it's on HDR, it can peak a little bit higher. Uh, on the non-touch OLED that I looked at with the Lunar Lake version of this laptop, that peaked at about 400 nits, so higher nitage here, or not nitage if that's even a word, higher brightness here on this uh, Arrow Lake version. Okay, a couple of differences between the displays. They are both OLED, both 14 inches, both 120 hertz, so 
That is where the similarities are. The differences, of course, is this one is a touchscreen display on this uh, Arrow Lake, the Lunar Lake version, non-touch. This one gets 500 nits of brightness. The Lunar Lake can go as high as 400 nits. And then I believe there's a non-touch version that goes up to 500 nits. This one, I believe, is the 400 nits. Uh, this one is a little bit brighter and has a better anti-reflective anti-glare coating than this one so a little less glare and reflection on the touchscreen believe it or not so that is the difference between the two but again they're both 120 hertz both excellent displays now because this doesn't have a touch layer they're able to get the weight down under a kilogram or one of the reasons they're able to get it under a kilogram this is a little bit over a kilogram so there's not that much difference in weight when you're when a real world all said and done when you're traveling that is a minimal amount to really uh think about and you won't really feel it all right, let's talk ports here, and they both have the same port selection. On the left is your USB-A port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, and the optional SIM card tray if you go with the 5G or 4G LTE modem. On the right side, you get your power button, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, another USB type A, an HDMI 2.1, and a Kensington lock port to round out the ports. An excellent port selection. Notably missing though, there is no SD or micro SD card reader, and I'd like to see those two Thunderbolt 4 ports split up, one on each side. Now, when I ran the Time Spy stress test, I got an interesting result here. The Arrow Lake actually did better than the Lunar Lake, getting a passing score of 99.5%, although both didn't really exhibit much throttling at all. Now, as far as the surface temperatures under load, very similar result, as you can see there. On the underside, never getting overly hot, so you can use these laptops, either Lunar Lake or Arrow Lake, on your lap, so not a problem there. And fan noise can reach as high as 48, 49 decibels on both of them under heavy load but when you're doing your balance mode doing everyday tasks it was not much of an issue so they stayed relatively cool and quiet throughout uh the only thing you will not do as well as you did on the lunar lake is battery life so they have the same i think 57 watt hour battery and it did uh pretty pretty okay i mean it didn't do groundbreaking it did a little bit less than lunar lake but not that much less and again we're talking about oled displays which tend to draw more power and having the touch layer on top of that certainly takes away from the battery life a little bit more battery usage there and of course it's 120 hertz that will certainly eat away at the battery so if you want to get a little bit more battery life bump it down to 60 hertz or dynamic ver uh, mode where you can eke out a little bit more but i would say battery life was actually pretty decent when I took it on that trip to Palo Alto and Silicon Valley uh, using the 5G modem, connecting to Wi-Fi occasionally, and of course doing my work. It lasted pretty much all day in mixed use. Of course, I did have to plug it in when I got back to my hotel. So I would say overall the battery life has been pretty decent considering what I have going on here. If I turn off the 5G modem, that will save a little bit more battery life. Turn off Bluetooth if you're not using it. Turn off any radios that will certainly use more power. If you're not using it, turn it off. You'll get a little bit more juice out of this or a little bit more power out of this, I should say. Or battery life is what I'm trying to say. As far as cameras, I actually have the upgrade 8 megapixel computer vision camera here uh, which was excellent and I didn't have it on the Lunar Lake version although I think it is an option if you if you go for that in the configuration of it so uh, I would recommend going with that but of course you be the judge you let me know what you think in the comment section below let's compare them and get a look and a listen at them so this is the camera on the brand new ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 running the Arrow Lake U processor, the Core Ultra 7 265U, 12 cores, 14 threads, hyper threading. It's a little bit different than Lunar Lake, but what do you think about the video quality and what do you think about the audio qualities? This is the computer vision, eight megapixel camera, 1440p video in this uh, Windows app, but of course, if you go with other apps, you can go up to 4K and it is uh, pretty good. What do you think about it? Let me know. What do you think about the audio? Let me know. Now, a couple of things, it is an IR our camera that means you can log in with face recognition with windows hello and it also has a physical shutter switch next to the camera for more security and privacy again let me know what you think in the comments section below
And this is the other version that they have in terms of the camera. This one's 1080p. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? And like the 8 megapixel one, this is IR, meaning you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello, and it also has the same shutter switch. Uh, but of course, it's not 8 megapixel. It doesn't have any of the uh, little bit more sharpness that the other one does have. But again, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, speakers, I didn't find any difference in terms of audio between the Lunar Lake and this one, of course, Arrow Lake. I would say it's a wash in terms of the sound. They have Dolby Atmos here. That's going to help with the spatial audio. Uh, pretty good, loud, got a decent bass, especially for a thin and light ultra portable as we have here. Certainly great. Not as good as a MacBook Pro or even maybe, maybe a, a MacBook Air, I would say, is a little bit better than this. But this is actually pretty good considering uh, the size and chat of this of course thin and light is the name of the game but of course let me know what you think let's give it a listen and you tell me what you think in the comments section below lunar lake <laughs> Arrow Lake. Now, another big difference, I think, between the two is that Lunar Lake actually supports PCIe Gen 5 SSD. And as you can see, the reads and writes were excellent on the review unit sent over by Lenovo. Now, my unit with Arrow Lake actually has PCIe Gen 4. So you can see they're about half or so less, of course, in terms of the reads and writes, although both are exhibiting excellent reads and writes for what you need to do on the laptop. But that's a pretty interesting dichotomy between the two. Okay, so I booted off this USB drive to Ubuntu Linux here on the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13. This one is, of course, the Arrow Lake. And it looks like the touch screen is working. The haptic touchpad here is working. The keyboard seems to be working. Let me connect to my network and we'll be right back. Okay, so the keyboard's working. The screen brightness is working, gets pretty bright here. And we also have the volume working. Yep, I hear the volume working. So that is good when I uh, increase the volume there. Uh, let me go to Firefox and go to my website. And let's see how this all performs. Again, I'm doing this off of a live USB drive. So just keep that in mind. And it's an older version of Linux, but I will update eventually this century at some point uh, as far as a distro. But this is uh, working as expected. So this is good. So let me go to my website. I have a new... Uh, graphics and logo that I'm using here. And yeah, so the scrolling works, everything works with this haptic touchpad. The touchscreen is working and you can see that there. So that is great, awesome. All right, so the camera is the only thing here like I need to check. Let's see if the camera's working. And let's see if that is no camera found. So once again, we have an issue with the camera, but everything else seems to be working. We'll have to do a workaround regarding the camera. Hopefully there is a solution there, but overall Linux is working. So overall, what do I think about this Arrow Lake version of the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition? A lot of things to say there, a lot of big name there. Uh, my feeling is unless you have a specific need for the 64 gigabytes of memory that this allows for, such as doing LLMs, AI work, if you don't have that need, I would stick to the Lunar Lake because you're going to do better in battery life. It'll run cooler, a little bit quieter, and you can get it even in lighter if you don't need the touch screen. It can come in under a kilogram, although I didn't notice a huge difference between the two in my bag. Uh, this one's certainly a little bit over a kilogram. Didn't make that much of a difference. It's so thin and light to begin with. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you will do a little bit better on single and multi-core on this one, but like I said, in real-world usage, I didn't notice a huge difference in the uh, difference between Lunar Lake and this Arrow Lake H. So that is one area where I 
think it's uh, not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, I think the efficiency you get out of those eight cores, eight threads from the Lunar Lake will be the difference maker here. Unless you have that need for the 64 gigabytes of memory that Lunar Lake is not capable of because it's capped at 32. Not a limitation by, set by Lenovo, but by Intel in the design of the chip and so forth. So if you need more RAM, go with this Arrow Lake H. But I think most people will be perfectly fine with the Lunar Lake version of this getting a little bit more battery life running cooler and quieter and you're not going to notice that much difference and you will do better in the graphics department because those Intel Arc 140 V graphics are better than the integrated graphics here. That's basically what I'm deducing from this. If you need the 5G, get it, uh, although it's not required. I think you can do fine tethering with your smartphone, with the hotspot and so forth, but I like having dedicated 5G on my unit because I can then devote it totally to this. I don't have to worry about tethering fees, all that stuff, whatever. Your provider may charge or limit you or cap you in terms of data. So I just like having my own connection on this. It also supports eSIM for those that are wondering, so just keep that in mind. But very similar other than that. Those are the differences between Lunar Lake and Arrow Lake. And I think uh, if you don't want to go for the 64 and you're okay with 32, which I think most of you will be, go with the Lunar Lake. I think you'll do fine. And you may even find it on sale. This has just been released, obviously. Now, I think there is also an Arrow Lake H processor that this may be available in in certain regions. I did not find it here in the U.S. But if you know about it, if you're out of the U.S. in a different region and they are selling the Arrow Lake H, version. Uh, let me know. And if you have one, let us know how that's turned out for you. I hope this has been helpful for you as far as which X1 Carbon Gen 13 to go with. Again, the bottom line is better graphics on the Lunar Lake, better battery life on the Lunar Lake, and better efficiency and overall better cooling on the Lunar Lake because of it has less cores to deal with. Uh, if you need 64 gigabytes of memory, go with the Arrow Lake. I think that pretty much sums it up here. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. And let me know how I'm doing. And if you are a casual viewer of my content, why not hit that subscribe button? It doesn't cost you anything. As we're making our big push for 300,000 subscribers here in 2025, it just blows my mind that we're even talking talking about that here in August of 2025, but I am certainly appreciative. If you're going to buy something like the X1 Carbon Gen 13, check out the links in the description below. Yes, they are affiliate links. No, they are not a huge commission, a small commission to help support the channel. Helps keep the lights on the studio, even though I'm in my backyard by my pool. And by the way, this is not an AI image. I know some people were saying this was done virtually or, or whatever. I saw some of the comments on some of the videos I did out here. Uh, this is real. I actually have a pomegranate tree behind me. You can see it over there. And that should be ready in November. So we should have some great pomegranate juice and fruits and so forth. So just wanted to point that out. That is real. That is a real pull. And I'm about to jump in right now. I don't think you want to see me with my bathing suit on my shirt off, but who knows? Maybe you do. I don't know. I'm about to jump in the pool. But until next time, this is Andrew and I'll see you in the next video.